Ooh, what is up you guys and of course welcome to another Vela Pokemon League battle and this is actually week 7 versus Nasser, the Houston Rodems and Tid, the Quebec Betix and yeah, sure enough, you know, I battled both of these, one in week 4, one in week uh, first week actually and I lost to both of them so I actually think these two players are really really good players and their team kind of representative of that and um, since I've enjoyed this game so much I really want to share it and I want to share more of how uh, these league battles has been going and most certainly the best ones uh, so straight off the bat here we got some Nasser's team here we see Jamega, Rhyperior, Moltres, Bolo, um, Stakataka and Rodum so yeah stack attack is really cool to see um his team is really well rounded with it how lucha and type of bolo so not seeing how lucha is kind of surprising then again tid has done really well versus finding types and has the means to actually deal with that really nicely so it makes sense but at the same time you know how lucha is awesome so why wouldn't you bring it but yeah that's just me and because of Tid, however we see necrosma cloister whimsicard muck uh, Glisco and Mega Blastoise. So, by definition, a uh, tier wise weaker team versus Nasser, but it is ha does have a really strong defensive core. I really like SC Whimsicott, Glisco, and Muck working together to do really well. And of course, Cloyster can be tremendously awful and definitely in the end game. So, without further ado, let's actually go into this match. Um, I do not really know the result of the matchup, however, like I said it here. It is the road there that is the interesting part, and of course, interesting to of course follow that up. First and foremost, here we're gonna see Sonic the John Mega is gonna be the lead here versus Chamberlain, which is in the cross mass. So, really, really cool from the get go. Um, this is where Prison Mom kind of saves it from the bug bus. Uh, this is a fairly long, but also 55 turns. So, we see that <clears throat> I'm really just gonna say it as it is. That Prisma were probably saving the Crossma there, but really not by a lot. Uh, and we see leftovers also, so I can assume that this is a more bulkier variant of the Crossma. So, surprise survival there, as uh, he's gonna switch out the summer lane, go to the end game, which is Mach. Hmm. So, right, not to switch it out, Jamega goes into Need Friends. This is Takataka, and this of course Takataka does really well in Trick Room. Probably a bit risky over Trick Room, consider Takataka is an option. So Alfonso comes in, that's the Glitz School. You see a Jar Ball, and this is going to be a fully powered variant. And oof, oof, it really does a lot, though. It really does a lot. Um, it does have a Protect, though, so it can kind of stall the Trick Room turns, though. I feel, I really can't stress this enough, that. Um, Tid puts him in a very tough position, consider uh, which position he was in before he actually set up this trick room. So trick room is really holding, well if anything, Tid back, so definitely a tough play. Uh, Stocks come in, that's the Mega Blastoise, and I do believe the trick room turn will end now, and um, this will put um, Tid back on the map and definitely gonna force him out. I'm assuming the Mega Blaster is going to go for a Skull here, since it really are no downplay towards that, besides Bulu, and you always want a Bulu bird anyway. Uh, or predict, possibly predict that and actually go for uh, an Ice Beam. Either way, I think it's fine. Uh, Mega Blaster, no matter what, is going to force that Stack Attacker out, however. So, um, let's see. Yeah, and Sonorous Veil, all right. Then they go for a prediction there, go straight on at it, and that will do... I guess I should say okay damage, um, definitely not uh, forces out damage, but it's up there, but of course with leftovers and of course the terrain receives a little, there's going to be basically nothing on the Bulu. Um, so Nazi switches out to Bulu, goes to need friends again, which is stack attacker, and um, I guess, yeah, there we go. This means Bulu is faster than Blastoise. Um, back to Muck. Hmm. Muck, however, can learn Brick Break. It doesn't go for that, however. Usually, Stagataka carries um, the the C or Rock MC, so a bit of risky play there. Uh, definitely would have seen something like Brick Break to try to force that Pokemon down. Well, I guess it's back to Jaro Balling. Hmm. Stagataka turns out to be quite the threat, so I definitely want to look forward to see how this battle turned out to be 55 turns. As, of course, we're going to see the Rock MC. Um, it really. Like, just of a personal preferences, I mean, I was really one of those players that said Stuck Attacker was 
not necessarily that good from the get go. Little felt it was out of touch, hard to use, good, bad defensive typing. However, it's been showcasing itself to be well, quite formidable to be honest. Um, mainly because of the trick room shenanigans, which really does make it hard to deal with head on. And I think Nasser is showcasing just why this Pokemon is so tremendously hard to be dealing with head on if you get gets behind the trick room that is. So we know a plus one stack attack. Uh, while Stone Edge will do a lot of damage, it definitely won't take out a Blastoise. We're gonna see the washing machine. Washer machine, okay, right. Uh, that's a great name for uh, for the road and watch as Aura Sphere. It really does a lot, though. It really does a lot. And as you guys know already, since Rotom is levitating, it won't be affected by the terrain, which means no recovery from it. And um, I guess there is no reason to stay in there. Unless, of course, Mega Blaster has something like Miracle, which would have been kind of cool. Uh, it goes back to endgame, and Volt Switch shouldn't really do anything here because Muck is Muck. Um, quite frankly, Alola Muck is tremendously good in League Concept Mail because of that. A gluttony figure berry combination with recycle, and of course, it can learn Giga Rain, though it won't be enough to care for this range. Rhyperior is a threat as Lafonso comes in, and I'm pretty sure Stone Edge is in range of taking it out, but we won't find that out. As uh, Tether got a golden opportunity to go for a roost, I do believe Rhyperior is Shekte, even if it carries the likes of Ice Punch, it won't be enough to take out the Glisco. As um, oh, straight off the bat, going for the substitute, and we see the ice punch. But as I stated before, I'm pretty sure Galiscor can kind of stall that out uh, due to Roos actually neglecting course of flying typing off the Galiscor. So yeah, I think I think Nasser is right to stay in. Though I really, really think that um, um, Ted should be brave enough to go for. <laughs> go for the roost. We possibly couldn't carry it. That's a thing though. We've already seen protect. We've seen substitute. Um, possibly earthquake. It has to have earthquake, right? Uh, at this point, I mean, basically stalling out four turns. Um, I, I really don't have uh, an idea of what um, what Tid wants to create here. But uh, whatever he's doing, it's definitely going for a lockdown. As um, probably baiting for that protect. And uh, he should be able to go for another protect just to kind of get the recovery going on. I'm getting the feeling that this Gliscor could possibly be without uh, without recovery and have substitutes instead. And if so, that's, that's scary fun, actually. Since that would potentially mean that, um, well, it's going to be unreliable to recover and check things. Though, then again, as you guys see, it clearly has enough HP already to come back on track. Gliscor is a, definitely a fret and a half. As we see, Endgame comes in, and this should pop its figure berry. I do believe this um, this young mega could potentially be specs. Um, that's just my first thought of it, but you know that's subjective at best. As um, I think he's going to go for easy recycle. Uh, I think that's the main play to do because I do believe Lomak wins that matchup no matter what. As Tim comes in, which of course is the raw period. Um now, is whether or not he go for Ice Punch directly here predicting the Glisco, I, I'd probably do that myself. Um, I would definitely feel it would reason to. So, if Tid is feeling that, which he is, did he go for it? That's a big question. He didn't. Nasser played safe, going for a quick. And this should do a very good chunk on the Blastoise. Really risky though, consider that Glisco was such an easy Pokemon to switch in. Though Nasser definitely plays the mind games against Tid, and it feels like they are evenly matched here. Now, the question is, did Tid feel this switch and go for Ice Beam anyway? Or go for a possible Skull? No Rapid Spin. Hmm. So no rocks then. Um, then again, Rhyperia is a really healthy, so it is quite frankly subjective. But I do believe both Nasser and Tid are evenly matched, and um, I think Tid... Lost a bit of momentum from the get-go due to actually setting up Trick Room earlier against a team that does carry the stack attacker. So it's, um, I think it's, he does some fair recovery now as um, Whimsicott. Hmm. It could be carrying the power of Poison, that's an aspect. Uh, Whimsicott, while lacking in special attack, is still a very, very good Pokemon. As we see Encore. Hmm. And Encore, of course, goes through Substitute. So he's gonna spam substitutes for a while, and you know that's that's scary, right? 
this is why people hate Whimsicott. It definitely is one of set of monsters' biggest threat to be able to, of course, nullify whatever you do with Prankster. So Stack Attack comes in as I do assume we're going to see. I was definitely feeling U turn there. But Moonless is all the same and it shouldn't do anything to Stack Attack. I do believe it did, though. <laughs> it did fair damage. But it's definitely going to go for a Trick Room here. Uh, oh, as we see. What now? Which C move is this? Is it C Mud Slap or something like that? Oh, it's C Nature Powers. It turns out to be Bloom Doom. So it gets boosted by the Nature Power. This. This is something else. This is something else. I love it. Great. And of course, it knocks out the Stack Attack. So I do believe. Finally, Tid can play this game as he intended from the get-go, because Stack Attack really did throw him off. So Hot Bird comes in. Um, Moltres is checking this Pokemon just fine, though. Do Tid really have a switch in towards this? I do believe, while Muck is decent, um, I do believe Moltres can kind of wiggle that Pokemon around. And of course, Will-O-Wisp can shut it down to, to Muck, if anything. Though we won't find that out. Muck, however, can carry Rock Slide and Stone Edge. So we'll see if he carries that. Finding a hard time to believe that. No, we see Toxic. Makes sense. And, uh, well, we only, like, viewed half the battles. So we still have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of ways to go. As uh, I really don't believe uh, Tid should stay in there. Even though, like I said, Giga Drain and Brick Break are two aspects. I think Giga Drain would have been great. But we're going to see LaFunso comes in. And we're going to see the prediction. The prediction that knocks out the Glisco. That's... Great job, Nasser. That's there we have. There, there is the read we were looking for. <laughs> so right, Stocks comes in, and the thing is here, Mega Blastoise is now tougher and tougher for Nasser's team, no matter what. So the right play here would be go for an Ice Beam, expecting the Bulu, and um, clearly, of course, he's feeling that. And goes for Scald. Do we get the burn? No. But Rotom Watch is whittled down, though. So I feel that like that's going to be a very, very tough aspect for it. Um, and Volt Switch is, of course, the safest play here now that Gliscor is gone. And, of course, Whimsicott is probably the best switch after that. Whimsicott do kind of shakes no matter what um, the Rotom Watch, but it does kind of suffer from not being too healthy in the long run. So Sanic comes in. I don't believe, like, Muck is still the only Pokemon that shakes this Pokemon. It is whether or not I predict that I go directly to um, the right period. Nope, goes for Bug Buzz. I'm gonna like, knock it down to the range of Figure Berry. And of course, the Figure Berry is gonna pop. And then, of course, the easiest play is as well as usual, really, to actually go for uh, directly for a recycle. I do believe that um, Nasser can keep going for. Um, or what do you call it, um, for Bug Buzz and go for a possible the, the special defense drop, but that is definitely not what happens as um, he knocks off the, the specs, which definitely turns John Mega to less less of a threat, and um, no, whether Tid can go directly for Recycle, recover his muck. Like I said it before, muck really is a threat in half when it can be well, unchecked and keeps on recover because it's a very, very heavily special defensive beast. And I definitely keep, think this Pokemon keeps most Pokemon at bay. Um, Fire Blast does a right of damage, though. But like I said here, the best way to shake a muck here with a Moltres is actually go for a Will O Wisp. It's whether or not he has that, and I get the feeling he doesn't. And if so, then. Well, then Tid has another problem up his sleeve. Because Muck all of a sudden really does kind of provide a very, very strong aspect here. Um, wow. How about that? So, now Muck is free to attack. And I guess it will do that. As um, we see a two misses in a row for Moltres. Which is very tough. And the Moltres was Choice Scarf, right? So, probably not will wisp then. So, switch it up with Hurricane. Less accurate, but just as strong as Fire Blast. Or close to it, at least. But he gets confusion, though. So all of a sudden, Tides possibly has changed. Um, but yeah, if it is Scarf, then it's not going to win versus Smug unless it hurts itself. Um, and there's a Toxic, so there we go. Kind of expected something like that. Get the Reseal damage onto the Hot Bird. And, 
well t clearly you can just go for recycle again um it really just is cool to see how you can defensively just check a pokemon and whittle it down i do believe that's an aspect that um well for better or worse actually is um is really helping out depending on what type of player you are uh, if you can defensively check something, that means that you don't need to um, force out momentums, and I think that really is a strong aspect, and I think Tid is doing that really good right now. Um, bit weird, though. I think he hurts himself confusion and did not pop the berry. That was strange. Ooh, it does live, though. It does live. So if you hurt yourself in confusion, uh, you won't pop your berry. That's really, really interesting. And he just keeps on being confused. Um, hmm. So that was a close call for Ted. Clearly, he could have lost the muck right there. That didn't happen, though. And uh, Moltres gets stalled out and dies. Um, I mean, there's really nothing to it. Uh, so Tim comes in, the right pure, which really, really does look better and better. Uh, and I think Ted is definitely pushing Nasser to do the strong plays, while Earthquake is the easy play and could very, very well take out the Blastoise here. I do believe that's the right call to make, though. Was either that a whimsy card? Um, and, ooh, it's close. It's very close. It's very close, indeed. Um, right, switches out, goes most likely to Bulu. I would go for an Ice Beam no matter what here, or switch out the whimsy card just to get momentum. And then again, I don't believe you can get that from the Bulu. Bulu is a Pokemon that is doing really well here, and I really... Or not, sir, really, really don't need a burn right now. And Tid clearly do, because he needs something to make sure that uh, Bulo isn't hitting with all of his ferments power, of course, with the grassy terrain. Uh, Poor Lynch is just a cookie you don't want to deal with, is what I'm trying to say. Um, right. Switches out back to Whimsy Card. I do believe Horn Lynch would do a fair chunk here. Uh, actually, frustration. Ooh. Power of Bulo. The power of the Bulu. It really is up there. Huh. Well, we're closing in on the ending turns now. We only have 10 turns left, so something is all to happen here. Um, he switches out the Whimsy card. Don't want to risk it. I get that. Goes to end game, And um, I think this is going to knock out a little muck, actually. It's close, though. <laughs> it's close. This muck just won't have it. It's, this is something else. This is most certainly something else. This mug is just standing out as a formidable beast. And I really can't say much more. Um, sword stance, though. Ooh. Question is, did Tid go for the poison jab? No, he went for the recycle. Then again, he couldn't impossibly know this. Is he in range, though? Is he in range? That's the question. We see the frustration. Ooh, Muck keeps hanging on. I really, I really start to like this Muck quite a lot. Um, assuming Poison Jab is to play, is it going to knock out? It's four times effective after all. Yeah, there we go. I don't think the crit matters, but it could, depending on the set of, of course, the Muck. So the Muck, muck is, of course, keep on living. And um, yet again, right, Peter is the switching. Um, I really don't know what um, what Tid should do. He definitely have Pokemon to sack, I guess. And one of them is most certainly Whimsicott. Um, goes for Earthquake. It should live this. And it should retaliate with uh, Giga Drain if he carries that. Or... Oh! Ooh! It actually knocked it out. So, I guess the better question now is can Tid actually... Ooh, this is going to be tough, though. Tid's only response to this Pokemon now is, um, is of course Blastoise. Good thing Ronks isn't on the field, but I mean, Ice Beam is probably to play all over. Or Skull. Skull it is. Is it going to knock out a John Mega? It is. Alright, we're closing in. We definitely are closing in. Uh, so Washing Machine comes in, and same aspect here though. Volt Switch is his best play, and I don't believe Alolan Muck should be, should be coming in here. As it does come in here, um, because Volt Switch is something that's well, he doesn't go for Volt Switch. All of a sudden, we have a different game to watch. Um, the bigger question is 
pursuit. Do Tid have pursuit? Because he gets the pursuit right, I think he wins. He doesn't have that. We go into see recycle, and we also go into see Rapiro come in and uh, yet again actually get some. Well, well, I thought would be <laughs> a figure of recovery. That wasn't it. Um, well, this means that Alola Muck is dead. He can't shake the roll anymore. So he does the right play here by sacking the Muck. There's really nothing to it. And Rapiro actually outspeed the Muck. How about that? That's new. Um, so washing machine is now the biggest issue here. I do believe right here is sackable now that Alola Muck is gone. So Canada Day comes in. <laughs> the cloister. Um, Icicle Spear makes sense. Um, should knock it out. It means skill link and whatnot. Um, the question is whether or not this cloister has its... Um, it's sash intact, and if it is enough to deal with the washing machine, ooh, this is going to be tough. This is going to be very tough. So Rock Blast, of course, doesn't do necessarily anything. We do. It is outspeeding those. I can only assume that has a massive investment onto it. But yeah, hmm, it should be sashed. It is sashed. Good. So. I don't think Cloyster can knock it out. I really don't think Cloyster can knock it out. And it's whether or not... Is Blastoise faster? Because this will not be knocked out. No, 2 HP. That's that's clutch. That's clutch a lot. Alright, so it comes down to the last matchup. And I say it like this. Knowing how this game's end, I'm really happy I saw, saw the game like this. I think I appreciate the plays a lot more now that I see it in front of me. Um, so right, let's see. Yep, the watching machine is faster and going to knock out the Blastoise. And that's GG. Nasser win here one though. It is really it's a close game and I think Tid to be honest, I think Tid kinda choked. I think he had the game had he gone for recovery with his um what would you call it? Uh, with his muck there and just try to keep preserving it because in the end of the, end of the game here it really just need he could have sacked Blastoise over over sacking muck to be able to ensure that Cloyster can go on for the end sweep but yeah I mean that's always a risk I get that uh, but that's how I feel same thing with Pursuit I think that would have been a tremendous aspect to have but you can never know that from the first assuming matchup I I really don't know necessarily the whole set of the market, though. We saw Poison, yeah, we saw Recycle, Toxic. Um, I don't think we saw the last move from it, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, one thing I do want to say here is that the game is very long because Ted got the wrong foot from the get-go. Of course, going for Trick Room with Necrozma. I think that that play didn't make sense to me, and uh, I really want to kind of foreshadow that, that I think... It, it, it was just the wrong thing to do when you're facing against a team that has a stack of Taka. That said, I think Ted make a lot of recovery to try to make it back, but Nasser's um, tension of just being defensively very well acted versus Ted really just ended up being, um, in the end of the day, more effective than anything. Um, I think they have a similar play style. Like they prefer to play defensive and then have offensive momentum built up. And I think when both play like that, that you get a slower game and it comes down to the mind game, which does the game best. And I think Tid losing momentum early on really made Nasser all that more threatening. And while he did barely win, I think he won fairly. I think in the end of the day, if both plays close to perfect, Tid is the only one doing a mistake, and he does a mistake very early on. And as I said there, I think sacking Muck was a choke, but I really don't know how Nasser would have responded had he sacked um what do you call it? The Blastoise instead. Um, I don't know how much he could have whittled down the right, uh, the right period with, uh, with Cloyster, though I'm pretty sure he should have Liquidation or Surf, so with that in mind, you know, that's an aspect. But then again, maybe that would just have meant that Ronald Wash would have been all the safer play, but then again, he would have had made a recovery back. So it comes down to that back and forth, and quite frankly, I think if we go into play with that back and forth, then I think that... Um, Tid would have been able to 
win that matchup. As I said, it's super subjective, and in the end of the day, it comes down to who is the coolest when it, when it comes to making the plays. And there's what I think Nasser deserved to win this game because he was the most cold-hearted uh, or cold-headed throughout this matchup. So to both Tate and Nasser, thank you for sharing this game. Really good job on both of you. 55 turns of pretty much epicness is something that we won rarely see. So for a body's worth, thank you guys for that. And for everybody watching, thank you for doing just so. Um, and I'll see you on the next upload. Till then, take care.